Hey, my friends, welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. If you're not a Daily Torah channel subscriber, click the subscribe button so you never miss a single episode. Today we are on day three of this week's Daily Torah series called Pinhas, which means Phinehas. Yesterday we discussed God asking Moses to take a census of the next generation 20 years and older. Today our Torah portion continues with God instructing Moses on the division of the land by tribes. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or listen and review later. But let's pick up the story in Numbers chapter 26, beginning in verse 52. In Numbers chapter 26, verse 52, we read, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, To these the land shall be divided as an inheritance according to the number of names. To a large tribe you shall give a larger inheritance, and to a small tribe you shall give a smaller inheritance. Each shall be given its inheritance according to those who were numbered of them. But the land shall be divided by lot, They shall not inherit according to the names of the tribes of their fathers. According to the lot, their inheritance shall be divided between the larger and the smaller. Now, my friends, when Canaan was divided by lot, the lines were to be drawn according to this general principle. Larger tribes received a larger territory because they had more families to divide the land among. The actual apportioning of land within a territory would be done according to the lot, with the idea that God guided the lot. The apportioned land would be an inheritance remaining within the family and not to be permanently sold or transferred. Now, continuing in verse 57, and these are those who were numbered of the Levites according to their families, of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, of Marari, the family of the Mararites. And then in verse 62, we read, Now those who were numbered of them were 23,000, speaking of the Levites, every male from a month old and above, for they were not numbered among the other children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given to them among the children of Israel. So my friends, the Levites were not numbered in either the first or second census, because the men of their tribe were not to go to war. A second reason to not count the Levites was that they were to receive no inheritance of land as the other tribes did. Their inheritance was greater than property, the Lord himself. Instead of having their own land, the Levites were giving 48 cities distributed throughout Israel among the other tribes. These cities were scattered all over the land of Canaan, encompassing every tribe in every region. The Levites were divided into three groups, the Gershonites, the Kohathites, and the Morarites, each filling different roles in the tabernacle and later in the temple service. The scattering of the Levites had two main purposes. Number one, to instruct the Israelites in God's word. And number two, to guard the worship of God and serve as a warning. So the scattering of the Levites, my friends, among the tribes of Israel was a unique arrangement that played a significant role in maintaining the religious and moral life of the nation. This is why today we have many churches and synagogues in every city, town, and village. It's just that example from what we're reading here in Numbers. Now let's review our half Torah portion for today in First Kings chapter 19, and we'll be reading verses 5 and 6, continuing the story of Jezebel, 
threatening to kill Elijah and then Elijah in hiding. So in 1 Kings 19 verse 5, then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. So my friends, this was the mercy of God extended to Elijah. Physically speaking, he needed rest and replenishment. God gave him rest under a broom tree and provided miraculous food for the replenishment. God first minister to Elijah's physical needs. Remember, he had just slain all the prophets of Baal, and then he was going to Ahab to see Ahab and Jezebel, and Jezebel got word of it, and she threatened to kill him within 24 hours. Elijah got scared and he ran away. So God first ministered to Elijah's physical needs because he's tired from running and after doing all that he did in Mount Carmel. So this is not always God's order, but physical needs are important. Sometimes the most spiritual thing a person can do is to get enough rest and replenishment. That's why we have the seventh day Sabbath rest so that we can rest from our labors and we can replenish our our bodies and also our soul by going through Shabbat service and, and participating in worship and praise of God and learning about his word. So Elijah received this rest and replenishment repeatedly from the Lord. One quick nap and one quick meal wasn't enough. And we'll discuss this more tomorrow. But the spirit also needs to be fed and the body needs feeding also. Do not forget these matters, my friends. It may seem to some people that we ought not to mention such small things as food and rest, but these may be the very first elements in really helping a poor, depressed servant of God. We need to take care of people's physical needs so that we can actually minister them and spiritually feed them also. This was a very gracious act for God to deal with this, a deal like this with his servant Elijah. And tomorrow we will continue this amazing story in the journey of Elijah. But for now, let's review our Brit Hadashah portion for today in the Gospel of John chapter 2 reading verse 16, continuing our story from yesterday of Yeshua cleansing the temple courts. In John chapter 2, verse 16, we read, And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Now, my friends, those doing business in the outer courts of the temple spoiled the only place where Gentiles could come and worship. This area was called the Court of the Gentiles, and it was made into a house of merchandise, which it should not have been made into. Remember that cleansing was part of the Passover celebration, and this is taking place right around the Passover season and removing every speck of anything leavened, which was made with yeast, yeast being a, a, symbol, a symbol of leaven, uh, removing every speck of leaven from the home or the temple was a symbol, a picture of cleansing from sin. The presence of these merchants in the temple courts spoiled the only place where the Gentiles could pray. In addition to their dishonesty, made their presence all the worse. This, my friends, has become a big issue in modern day Christianity. Many have allowed paganism and worldliness to flourish and mix with what is supposed to be holy. This is why listening to the Daily Torah podcast is essential to understanding that we serve a holy God and his word and ways are holy. His instructions are holy. There is no mixing of pagan practices within his commandments in his way of life. My friends, if you haven't listened to our series on covenant 
versus replacement theology. Please take some time to listen to that. Nothing has changed. God, his Torah, Yeshua are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's end it here for today. Take some time to meditate on these words and how they apply to your life. Pray for us in this message to go out. Pray for those who are scattered throughout the world seeking their Messiah so that they will return to the Torah and their Hebraic roots. Share this message with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages and help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. Remember to visit us at mymdi.org. Take one of our free classes, download the daily Torah schedule. You can also order some of our books there. And if the Lord inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so we can reach more people with these messages. Just click the giving menu option or donate button on the website. Tomorrow, we will continue our studies. Until then, Shalom Aleichem, blessings, and Shalom, my friends.